Hello, dorks and deities. My name is TBS Guy, and welcome back to the boss designs of Dark Souls. Last time, we finished up, I, I hope we finished up, the DLC. Uh, killed Manus, the father of the Abyss, dealt with that whole business, and went off on an extended tangent about hands for some reason. And now, we have made our way, or rather, I have made my way back to Firelink Shrine. And as you can see, I've changed up my equipment a little bit. Now, something that's been bothering me for a few episodes now is that I've been killing the bosses on the first go, and it doesn't feel like I'm doing it because I've gotten that much better at the game. It feels like I've just got, like, a million Estus flasks and armor that never lets them punish me for making mistakes, and that's a little bit of a problem because I would like to die to the bosses a couple of times. Like, I would like to struggle. Um, and I don't, I, I do want to be forced to play a little bit better than I do instead of just tanking everything right with my face. So I've switched up the equipment a little bit. I've taken off the giant's armor for now. No large dad for you. And I've replaced the Svihender with the Silver Knight Straight Sword, which I just, because I've always wanted to use it, but I did, never had the dexterity previously. And I've replaced the giant's armor with the Paladin armor, which is still pretty strong. And we're going to be using various shields, I guess. And hopefully, this setup will make me a little bit more vulnerable to punishment from the bosses that we're fighting. And feel a little bit less overpowered. We'll see how that shakes out. But uh, right now, my plan, really, is to return to An Orlando. Because although this is a blind run, and I've done my best to avoid spoilers, certain things, unfortunately, have gotten through to me through the comment section and, you know, through uh, people in the live chat when I'm streaming the recording of the episodes telling me stuff that maybe I wasn't quite supposed to know. But I remember the last time, or rather the first time I went to Anor Londo and we met a certain large lady who had big features, um... And the chat uh, during that particular recording session were very insistent that she must die. And that she must die immediately and die horribly. And either, I guess, my chat on the streams have issues with women that they need to look at, or else there's some kind of a secret hidden up there that I don't know about yet. And it would have been fun to figure that stuff out on my own, although, to be honest, I'm not sure I would have figured it out on my own, that you can attack this lady and something would happen. But, um, yeah. Thou hast filled the role of best. Indeed, a worthy successor thou shalt be. My patience was not for new. I beg of thee, succeed Lord Gwyn, and inherit it the world's fire. We have only thee. So, Gwendolyn here. Gwen, 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 Gwendo, Gwen, whatever. She is continuing the whole flattery angle of like, you're the chosen one, you're the best one, you're the only one who can save the world, please do all the world-saving business stuff. But we have grown suspicious of that over the course of these episodes, and we've sort of realized that maybe the whole filling the Lord Vessel Age of Fire thing, it could be that it is a poor idea. We have grown suspicious of this whole chosen undead business, and we have decided that uh, we don't agree with it. So... Sorry, lady. <clears throat> Thou that tarnisheth the Godmother's image, I am Gwyndolin. And thy transgression shall not go unpunished. Thou shalt perish in the twilight of Anor Londo. Well, this is a different mood all of a sudden. That might have been an illusion. I'm pretty sure I didn't get any souls for destroying that thing. Turns out Anor Londo holds a few secrets. Well then, let's explore. So yeah, the vibe of this place is different. It's still very clean. Like, the janitors are still doing a good job, but wow, the lighting director is Ed Wood all of a sudden. That's a deep cut for the cinephiles out there. Hey, dudes. I just murdered a goddess. That's totally cool with you guys. Okay, no, I guess it's not. Now, there's no need to be rude about it. Honestly. You'd think I committed some kind of sacrilege or something. Okay, well... They weren't happy with me. It's oh so quiet. Shh. Shh. 
It's oh so st oh the silver knight is gone too. Wait, so are all the monsters just gonna be gone? And it's just like a bunch of humans hanging out? What about the demons that were hanging out? No. God, it's dark. I can't see a damn thing anymore. What about the big guys? No. No big guys. Hello? Is anyone here? I can't see what the heck I'm doing. That's better. Wait. Are the jackasses on the ramparts over here, are they gone? Oh, I hope they're gone. Oh, it's so peaceful. Oh, thank God I killed that lady. Oh, look at this. Look, 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 look. I can just, I can just... Hello, hi. Oh, no, you goddamn... I should have... Why are you here? Everyone else is gone. Why are you holes still up? Oh my God. God damn it. <laughs> it was going to be such a nice moment for the video. <laughs> it's like, ah, and Orlando's quiet now. Nope. Is, is that the fire keeper? Well, she's not happy. That's for sure. So it was you, was it? Ah, sorry about that. A blade upon a deity. Well, she was an illusion, to be fair. I shall end your suffering here and now. It is the least that I can do. Actually, I'm fine. I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, you don't need to. I'm. Uh, you know, I'm. 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 I'm totally fine. The suffering isn't that bad. Can we talk about this? Cool weapon, though. Is that like a miracle or? So? Holy crap! Her roll is terrible. Lady, even I have better role than that. This man is a threat, Master Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn, huh? So, like I said, I've tried to avoid spoilers, but I know that there's a optional boss hidden behind killing Gwen Gwendo Gwen Breast Lady. So now we just have to figure out where he is. Because I feel like I remember I found a ring in the catacombs that said something about Gwendolyn. Like, that had, it had like a thing about something. So I'm kind of hoping the ring has a clue for me as to where I'm supposed to go. Otherwise, I'll just have to go explore, I guess. Exploring in a Dark Souls game. What a novel concept. Hello, bonfire that still works. Who the hell is your firekeeper? I don't know. This one. Dark Moon Seance Ring. This ring is granted to adherents of Gwendolyn, Dark Moon Deity, and Glassborn of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. So that's a brother of the lady we just killed, or didn't kill. It's not clear if she was alive. Grants additional magic attunement slots. Well, that's useless. The Dark Sun, Gwendolyn, is the only remaining deity in Anorlando. Right, so, so, the, so his sister is an illusion, because if he's the only remaining deity, then she can't have been alive. His followers are few, but their tasks are of vital importance. Okay. Kind of tempted to... Yeah, I'm just gonna bring that along. So, Gwendolyn is in here... ...somewhere. I just wanna know... ...if I do that and then the Mask of the Father. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Oh, see, now I'm... Oh, now I'm tempted. Yeah, let's go with that. That's, like, need to learn to roll sometime. I'm sure it's going to be important in Dark Souls 2. Now, I remember the first time we saw these statues, I remarked that there is a conspicuous third place here where someone should be, but isn't. So I would have to surmise that that is Gwendolyn. No? Hmm. Okay. And, like, the obvious place for him to be would be, well, here. Like, where he's supposed to be, theoretically. But it's not a secret wall. Oh, Princey! Little Princey boy Gwendolyn! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Uncle Skyen's got a nice birthday surprise for you! <gasps> It's about, oh, say, so four or five feet long and made of steel. I promise you'll love the taste. The only other place I can think of where I haven't been yet in an Orlando, really, is Titanite Demon's Lair, 
room place. Just like last time I was here, it completely destroyed me. But uh, is the is it protecting something maybe? Oh, I do not do a lot of damage to you. Ah! Don't be like that. I'm your pal. I'm your buddy. I'm your friend. Please die. Thank you. Okay. Titanite. Neat. So... No? Nothing I can... Click on. Well, okay then. I'm trying to think if there's somewhere I haven't really been. Because I don't remember. What about the door over here? No? Is he in here? Eh? Well, I'm confused. Hidden path ahead. So, hmm. Well, I mean, I don't think I've ever been down here, have I? It's worth a shot. Oh, right, that just leads back into there. Are the painting guardians still here? Oh, yeah, they're not dead. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well. I thought maybe I'd have to remove the lever again. Nope. What if I do this? Whee! Did I ever actually go... I don't actually remember how I got that up there in the fr I mean, I guess I went through the cathedral and then came down here and something, but... Thinking about it, I don't actually remember how I got this to go up in the first place. Okay. Well, this is new. Hello. Charmer. Try lever. Charmer. Well, there's a bonfire. There's also a charmer, you say. No, this is definitely new. I don't remember this. And I haven't clearly haven't been here. Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. That sounds powerful, but is it? Lord Gwyn's firstborn who inherited the sunlight once wore this ancient ring boosts the strength of miracles. Lord Gwyn's firstborn was a god of war, but his foolishness led to a loss of the annals, rescinding his deific status. Today his name is not even known. I guess it was that guy. Not very impressive for a god, I have to say. Well... That looks ominous. Oh, I actually wanted to read the message. Oh well. Hello! Heretic. Oh, hi. First thou offendeth the godmother. And now thou see fit to trample upon the tomb of the great lord. I am the dark sun, Gwyndolin. Let the atonement for thy felonies commence. No! That's wrong English, you jackass! I have come here to stab you with a sword and correct your grammar. Okay. Ooh, this is the Moonlight Butterfly music. So I oh, I guess he's got spells also. <laughs> yup. He's definitely got those. Oh, get over here. Oh, he looks cool. Oh, I'm doing a lot of damage to him. Ow. Bad timing. There we go. You can just roll right through all this. Okay, he has also got a weapon. Ha, gotcha. So, you have tentacles. Please don't use them on me. 
also, you I don't know what the hell that is, but stop using it! Okay, so he's got tentacles, and he's got this helmet that looks like... It's, it's got sun imagery going on, which I suppose is appropriate for him, given that he's one of the Sun King's... God damn it, stop doing that! Ah! Ah! Uh, how long is this freaking? Oh, I guess it's an illusion. I... Uh, no! No! Oh, well, there we go. Okay. Gwyndolin, is it? Right then. Captain Tentacles! Why the hell did I respawn up here? This one isn't even lit. I'm gonna have to walk all the way back. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to go through the cathedral to get to him now. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Oh, no, wait, I have a better idea. Oh, come on! I thought I thought I was clever. Damn it. Okay. All right. Hello, hi. I was hoping I'd never have to go this way again. Oh, I am going to kick your entire ass, you little sh you made me walk all this goddamn way. Anyway. Hi. Oop. Why is my roll worse? Where's my good roll? What the hell? I didn't equip anything that was heavier. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was the bow. I equipped the bow. That's what it... Oh, my God. Of course, that's what it was. Of course... It, uh, <laughs> I have to go all the way back there now. <laughs> Ah. Anyway, Gwendolyn. So, there's a couple of... Int I mean, I haven't been able to look at him that closely because he's too far away all the time. Like a coward. But there's a couple of interesting things about his design. Like, first of all, the tentacle feet. They're an aesthetic choice. Like, I imagine... Like, I don't know if he was born with them or if it's Maybelline, but they do mark him out as a... Like, it's the kind of feature that you would usually see on... Because octopus imagery and uh, generally cephalopoth and tentacles are often used as metaphors and visual indicators of manipulation. Like, both in literal terms, because, like, you know, having eight arms lets you move a lot of things around at the same time, but also in terms of, like, having having a finger in every pie, having your tentacles, like, having things trapped in your machinations. It's, it's a visual indicator of being manipulative, of being a manipulator, which seems to square pretty well. Heretic. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know, I get it. Heretic, yada, yada, yada. Hi! Hello! Got you! Okay. So he's dressed all in white, which is, you know, an obvious visual uh, indicator. That's like indicator of being like a priest or associated with divinity of all kinds. Why am I trying to reclaim? I didn't have any souls when I died. Oh boy. Oh, okay, I'm back here again. Great. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I like that. Okay. I'm going to go to the Duke's archives, and I'm going to use the bonfire there to warp. 
because no, screw this noise. Uh... Not doing any more of that bridge nonsense, you little sh I swear to God. Oh, you... Sorcery builds are for cowards! Ah! No! Oh, my God. Even if I... Oh, oh, those aren't tentacle feet. Those are snakes. Cool, okay. Well, even more symbology of, of like, being deceitful and deceptive. He's got snakes for feet, literally. The, the universal symbol of deceptiveness. Satan giving the apple to Adam and Eve and stuff like that. Oh, you! Ugh. Oh, oh, we're in the home stretch now, boy! No! No! <laughs> Oof! Oh, well, I wanted the fights to be more challenging, I guess. <laughs> oh, 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 you're going to be satisfying to kill. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, God damn you. So let me just, because, oh. Because I can definitely hide from the arrows by going behind the pillar. So, how about... Well, I can't hide from that one. Okay, just gonna check. <laughs> okay, I can hide from the one of them, but the other one... Ow! Just passes right through, okay. They track track me a bit more than I thought they did. Okay. So that works. <laughs> Uh-oh. Right, so now he's gonna start teleporting. And I'm gonna start sorting! Ow. You! You! Okay. All right. It's been fun, kiddo. But I'm afraid... Oh, you have got to be shitting me. No! I was rolling, you son of a stupid oh. damn mother... Mamma mia! That wasn't a jump! That was a roll! I want to roll, Dark Souls. I want to roll. Okay. Okay, so if I do that, I can dodge through them. So oh, he was shooting at me. Damn it. Oh, that was bad timing. 
I don't know what that weapon is, but I want it. No. Oh, okay. Okay, this time. This time for sure. For sure this time. Yes, arrows. Good. I can dodge those. I don't run straight into them like an idiot. Ah! Suck it, jabroni. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. So, interesting kid. Pity he had to die. What's this place? I guess that's his chair. Miracle wielded by Lord Gwyn's firstborn. Boosts right weapon with rays of sun. Power of sunlight manifests as his lightning is very effective against dragons. When the eldest son was stripped of his deific status, he left this on his father's coffin, perhaps as a final farewell. I also got an armor set. Is that... Oh! Helm of the Dark Moon Nightess, Firekeeper of Anorlando. After becoming undead, she visited Dark Sun Gwendolyn at the Mausoleum of the Spiral Depths, became a Blade of the Dark Moon, and assumed the flame-keeping duty. She received this helm, which hides her hideous form and helps her hunt the guilty. There's definitely a thing about the exploitation of the undead curse to maintain the power of the divine. Like, cause, cause, uh, Gwen, uh, Gwen, uh, uh, Guinevere. Why do I keep forgetting that? Guinevere keeps harping on about that. Like, she keeps going on and on about, oh, she'll stop this needless sacrifice of the undead, yada, yada, yada. And we start the game by being told to ring the bells of awakening that open the path to An Orlando through Sin's Fortress to learn the true fate of the undead. Like, so if we take the perspective that what's going on here is that we're being railroaded by people like Frampt and indeed like like Guinevere into following this path of prophecy thing. The lords of An Orlando are exploiting the dark sign and the curse of undeath as a way to make people try to gather the lord's souls and perpetuate the age of fire. Like they're using the threat of this plague, this curse, to get people to do what they want in order to perpetuate their rule over Lord Ran. So, soul of Dark Moon Gwindolin, god of the dark sun and guardian of deserted An Orlando. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's all it's not a soul. Okay. So he was a god of the dark sun, huh? But yeah, he's dressed in robes. He is I mean, he 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 seems male. Like I think he's he uh, he's identified male in a lot of the in his voice, certainly seems to be a male voice actor, and um, there's that talk of, of the hidden sun and yada, yada, yada. But there's an ambiguity to him because he's dressed in robes. Basically. Like, he looks like a priestess more than like a prince. Um, so there's, there's some gender ambiguity going on with him. What really annoyed me about that fight is like every time I got close enough to get a look at him, he would just teleport away like a little bastard. So getting a proper grip on his design, like I really liked the sunlight helm design that hides his eyes because that again is something like hiding the eyes of a character is a good way to indicate, you know, hidden motivations or hidden intentions. But uh, even though this took a lot longer than the last several boss fights have, I'm still gonna have to throw it over to Future Sky and to do a proper analysis of Dark Sun God Gwen Gwendolyn. Over to you, Future Sky. Oh wait, I remember. It's the... it's the... It's the dwarf. Am I seeing... Hmm?
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy sitting out there. That's new. Oh my god, stop! Jesus Christ! You guys are so far beneath me right now, I can't even begin to express it. There's a guy out there. What the hell is he doing out there? <laughs> oh, don't fall down, don't fall down with 50,000 souls. Don't do that. It's that guy from the ca from the from the uh, um, uh, 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 before Blight Town. I Shemai, I didn't expect to meet anybody here. I suppose. Yeah. Things think alike, eh? <laughs> I didn't ex. What? What the? F are you Why are you here? Hmm. I'm afraid I don't see anything here. Yeah. No. Sh I have gold pine resin. I don't need that. Do you have any new items? Oh. Wait, is that... How the hell does he have Ornstein's armor? Crown of the Dark Sun. So that's Gwendolyn's ar... Is that Artorias' stuff? How the hell do you have... What? Okay. And the Iron Golem, I guess. Well, all right then. I kind of want Artorias' stuff. Okay. So... This crown of the gods demands faith immeasurable of its wearer, but it is imbued with dark moon power that enhances all magic. Well, that explains why he was one-shotting me. The image of the sun manifests Gwendolyn's deep adoration of the sun. The power of the moon was strong in Gwendolyn, and thus he was raised as a daughter. Oh. His magic garb is silk thin and hardly provides any physical defense. Yeah. He was raised as a daughter. Bec oh, so, ah, that's interesting. Well, okay, well, g thank God I recorded both episodes back to back, because that's kind of important, I think, because he was f***ing a little bit with gender presentation. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to retcon that into the previous episode. <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, Future Sky in here, and before we get into the proper discussion of Gwendolyn's character design, there's a little thing we need to talk about. Remember how during the episode I did a freeze frame and kind of zoomed in a little bit on a specific word in a message that someone had left on the floor that I had then chosen to blur out? Yeah, about that. See, the word in question was trap, and I read that message as a warning that, oh, look out, there is an actual dangerous trap there which is going to trigger and sap your HP. As it turns out, that may not be the way in which that word was meant. As we learn in the little segment I appended to the end of the episode there, Gwendolyn was born biologically, as it were, male, but was raised as a daughter because of his connection to the moon. So the word was not meant to denote an actual physical, literal trap, some poisoned arrows or something that was going to kill me, but rather to be a comment on Gwendolyn as a character. Now, I know a lot of people aren't really fully aware of this, especially in the anime community where that word is thrown around pretty liberally by people who don't mean anything bad by it, but that word is generally considered by trans people to be like a really hurtful slur. Now, this is a Dark Souls video, so I don't especially want to debate linguistics right now. If you're interested in a full breakdown of that particular word and its history and why it is considered a slur, there is a card up in the corner right now that you can click on, or there's a link in the description to a video by ContraPoints that lays out the whole thing in pretty excruciating detail. I bring it up for two reasons. First of all, because a lot of people just don't know that there might be a different hurtful context to that particular word. And while I'm not trying to assert any kind of moral authority over how people are allowed to speak, I do believe I have a right and sometimes even a responsibility to at least make people aware of other potential meanings of the terminology that they use. The second reason I bring it up is because we're going to be having a discussion about Gwendolyn's particular gender presentation. And if any of you would like to carry on that discussion in the comments, you should know if you use that particular word in the colloquial anime-centric meaning to try and have that discussion, 
I'm gonna have to delete your comment because my policy on the channel is that I don't allow slurs in my comments, regardless of context, whether or not they are intentional. Uh, anyway, with that business out of the way, let's talk about the actual character. And I suppose it behooves us to start with the most obvious part of his character design, which is the, the, the tentacle feet. And I mean, there's other stuff about him too, but the most notable and immediate feature that you notice about the character is that he has tentacle feet. Now, those tentacles do turn out to be snakes, but we're still dealing with a character who is, for all intents and purposes, half human and half octopus. And just to make an obvious and strangely apt comparison, Gwendolyn, too, is involved in taking advantage of poor unfortunate souls, specifically by offering them glory and grandeur as successors of the Sun King, even as hundreds, or for all we know, perhaps thousands of undead destroy themselves in the pursuit of that particular quest. So, I've already spoken about this during the episode, but generally speaking, octopus imagery, certainly in political cartoons, is associated with being manipulative, powerful, deceitful, greedy, controlling the world from behind the scenes. Much of which applies pretty directly to our dear little Gwendolyn. Now, the fact that on top of being octopus-like tentacles, those tentacles also happen to all be snakes just kind of compounds the imagery. Once again, snakes associated with deceit, deception, untrustworthiness, and hidden intentions, as well as, of course, poison, with the cherry on top being their famous role as seducers of the innocent. Now, for another obvious element of the character, Gwendolyn is wearing a crown shaped like the sun. And there's an interesting dichotomy there, because for all the gold that he's wearing on the top half of his body, the vast majority of the character is silver. Now, gold and silver, what an interesting contrast. Does that one appear perhaps someplace in nature? Maybe some celestial bodies that are commonly associated with religious authority and royal power? Oh yeah, sun and moon. And herein, I think, is one of the cleverest bits of Gwendolyn's particular character design and concept, because much like how the light of the moon is actually an illusion, it is merely reflecting sunlight, so too is Gwyn merely reflecting the splendor of Gwyn, the Sun King. This is revealed to us most explicitly when we destroy the illusion of Guinevere. Golden and Orlando, which up until this point was illuminated by bright sunlight, darkens and Pales, illuminated now not by the sun, but by the reflected silver light of the moon. Just as Gwendolyn is the last true deity in An Orlando, so too is the moon the last true source of light in that place. Much like the rest of Lord Ran, it is merely a pale reflection of the grandeur and splendor of the distant and fading age of fire. Which leads us on neatly to a rather interesting question. What is the gender of the moon? Now, if you live in Western Europe, your answer is fairly likely to be female. In languages that use gendered nouns like French, Spanish, Italian and the like, the moon is consistently considered female, and a lot of this probably goes all the way back to the ancient Greeks, and especially the Roman Empire, which was instrumental in spreading the Greek influence all over the European continent. A lot of Greco-Roman conceptions about especially celestial bodies and astronomy survive in culture to this day, among them the gender of the moon. Now the moon, by virtue of being one of the most visible celestial objects in the sky next to the sun is generally speaking important to every single culture, folklore, mythology, and religion on the planet. And so it shouldn't really be much of a surprise to learn that in various cultures all around the world, the moon and the deities associated therewith have all kinds of different attributes, including gender. So we know that Gwendolyn was born biologically male, but was raised, according to the item description of his outfit, as a daughter. And as an explicit reason for why he was raised as a daughter was his extremely powerful connection to the moon. So on the surface, Dark Souls is going wholesale with the Greco-Roman conception that the moon in particular is female as part of a dichotomy with the sun, which is generally considered male. But like with a lot of things in Dark Souls, there are some unusual and kind of fuzzy, ambiguous edges around those strict categories and definitions. First of all, there is Guinevere, who is plainly and obviously within the context of the game, a sun 
goddess. She's a literal representation of the golden light of Enorlandu. Illusion or not, the illusion depicts Guinevere as people know and expect her to be, i.e. the daughter of the Sun King and therefore an avatar of the Sun herself. Then there's the fact that the avatar of the moon on Earth, the person most in tune with the moon's otherwise feminine powers, is Gwendolyn, a person who, at least according to the text in the game, is identified as male. And finally, there's the fact that the gender of the player character is not predetermined. You can reach Gwyn as either male or female and take his place as the one who kindles the fire. And neither that role nor those powers are contingent on the gender of the character who is doing it. So, here's a reading of those particular contradictions. Over and over in Dark Souls, the deities of the world, your Gwendolyns, your Guinevere's, and the people who are aligned with them keep reiterating that you are the chosen undead and it is your fate to succeed, Lord Gwyn, and rekindle the first fire, yada yada yada, prophecy, everything is set in stone, everything is predetermined, you just need to do what you're told and carry out the preordained fate of the undead and everything will be fine, don't think about it too hard, that way is where the Lord Souls are, go get them, champ. But then, as I have already harped on about endlessly as we proceed through the game, it becomes very, very clear that we are not the first chosen undead, and we probably shan't be the last. Plenty of people are ringing the bells. Plenty of people have attempted this before us, and if we fail, presumably plenty of people will attempt it after. Our journey is not as fateful and preordained as the gods would have us believe, and our destination is not quite so set in stone. Despite all the predetermined categories, despite all the boxes that the gods would like to fit us and the entire world into, the world and the people in it are just too unique and complicated for that little scheme to work out. Your god of the sun will be a woman, your god of the moon will be a man, and the chosen undead will hurl a fireball at one and stab the other to death. And from that particular perspective, Dark Souls is at least in part a game where you have the opportunity to reclaim your freedom from a power structure that is obsessed with trying to define who you are and who you are allowed to be. An opportunity, I might add, which Gwendolyn was never afforded in his life. He was raised as a daughter not because that's how he particularly felt or because he wanted to be, but because the people around him decided that that is the role that he's supposed to play. Who he is and what he wanted was subordinate to the needs of the power structure around him. They needed a moon god, and so that's what he became, but look at what he's wearing on his head. That's not the outfit of someone who's happy to be the moon. That's the outfit of someone who, despite being the moon, aspires to be the sun. And that's what he calls himself, isn't it? He doesn't call himself the Moon God, Gwendolyn. He calls himself the Dark Sun. And I'm not entirely sure that it's an accident that that word is a homophone. Hey, thank you very much for watching another episode of the Boss Designs of Dark Souls. We are getting closer to the end now, boys. We are in the home stretch. I just need to edit the last few episodes together. As I've said many times, after Dark Souls comes Dark Souls 2, then Bloodborne, then Dark Souls 3, at least if the series and my YouTube career can manage to last that long. So if you want to see that, well, please support the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with other people who are interested in Dark Souls. And if you want to help out more directly, well, Patreon is an option. There's some rewards over there if you sign up for a monthly subscription of literally anything. Or if you prefer to give a one-time tip, I have a couple of tip jars listed down in the description. As I say at the end of my videos, even a $1 donation makes much more of a difference to an online content creator than you think. It can literally be the same as thousands of views on a video or tens of thousands of views on an ad-supported webpage. So, whether it's me or it's someone else, if you have online content creators whose work you enjoy, please consider supporting them directly. Even those very small amounts mean much more than you think. Of course, if you can't or don't want to, I completely understand. I'm just happy that you've watched the video this far. If you haven't enjoyed it, there is a dislike button down below. Or at least, there seems to be. There seems to be a dislike button. It's always been there, right? Always. On YouTube.com, dislike buttons. Ever since the beginning. That's what they've been telling you, right? That's what you've been told to believe. So, will you click it? Will you fulfill that part of your preordained destiny 
or will you? Like the brave chosen undead who defies the will of the gods, defy the will of YouTube, and click on the like button instead because that's better for my videos. Thank you very much for watching.